Hey guys, it's that time again. Yes, it's time for our annual Men's Day celebration. It's Men's Day 2022. This year's Men's Day theme is Help Wanted. That means let's get involved and lend a hand. We're asking all men 17 and under to pay $10, all men 18 and over to pay $200. Our Men's Day celebration theme color is blue. So come on, guys, let's make this the best Men's Day ever. Men's Day will run now through July 17th. And remember our theme, Help Wanted. Our Men's Day scripture is Matthew 9, verses 37 and 38. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Gentlemen, let's celebrate the harvest. Men's Day 2022 is upon us and help is one. Now take that, Satan. Four. Calling all golfers. Gentlemen, let's tee it up. Our Men's Day golf outing will be held Saturday, May 28th at Seven Lakes Golf Club in West End, North Carolina. Buses will leave the church at 7.30 promptly for 18 holes of golfing fun. So all you pros and pretenders, get ready. A full menu lunch will be provided, and all of this for only $20. A sign-up sheet is in the vestibule. So golfers, get ready. We'll see you there. Good morning, Williams Memorial. These are today's announcements for Sunday, May 22nd, 2022. For the month of May, in-person sanctuary and parking lot worship will be held at 8 o'clock a.m. only. Virtual services will continue to be broadcast at both 8 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. services. No registration is required. The Embracing Your Family Legacy Project continues with the Black History Committee presenting an information session on Thursday, May 26th at 6.30 p.m. A guest presenter will share information and tips and answer questions. Zoom information will be provided prior to each session. The Feeding 10,000 campaign is off to a good start. Our theme is Purpose Driven 10,000, a 12-year drive of showing love, dedication, and sacrifice. We are blessed to be a blessing. We will collect green beans for the month of May and corn during the month of June. Graduates of high school, college, and above will be recognized on Sunday, June 12th. To be recognized, all graduates must submit information using the link tinyurl.com slash wm dash grad 2022 by Friday, May 27th. All photos must be emailed to yonkeisha at hotmail.com. The Carolina Region Annual Conference will be held on Sunday, July 24th through Wednesday, July 27th, 2022. Williams Memorial will host the annual conference and it will be held at the Cory Convention Center in Greensboro and here at Williams Memorial CME. Volunteers will be needed, so mark your calendars. Thank you for your commitment to serve. Virtual Sunday School will meet at 9.45 a.m. for all classes, preschool and primary, junior, youth, adult, and ministers. The Zoom links are sent through email and text. Please contact the church if you are not receiving this information. Join us each Monday evening at 6.30 p.m. in corporate prayer with Unite 3400. Moments of nurturing prayer times are on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 noon. Dial 339-209-6345 to join these corporate prayers. The Love Is Cell Group continues to feed the community a hot meal every Thursday. Volunteers and donations are needed to help pack bags on Sunday mornings. Please call the church office to sign up. We are still encouraging all members to get vaccinated. Let's do our part in trying to keep our members safe as we come to worship here. The vaccine has proven to greatly lower the risk of hospitalization and death caused by COVID-19. During the current phase, we are abiding by the following guidelines. One hour socially distanced with mask worn sanctuary worship service to be held each Sunday at 8 o'clock a.m. during the month of May. You may still listen to service from the parking lot. 
One-hour church services will be broadcast on Sunday at 8 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. via internet and phone. Pay your offering by mail, by Givelify, e-giving, or text to give. Bible study is held each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. via our online platforms. Watch recorded services on the TCT station each Sunday at 5 o'clock p.m. and on Spectrum Cable TV Channel 8 each Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. and Friday evenings at 7 o'clock p.m. Let us remember our bereaved families and our sick and shut-in with our prayers and calls. We would like to leave you with just a thought. Take hold of the Word of God and blossom, because God will round up weeds. Good morning, good morning, good morning. The Bible said, lift up these hands, all of your gates, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. My brothers and sisters, I just want to say good morning to you from the pulpit here at Williams Memorial. We want to greet everyone that's on Facebook, those are in the parking lot, those are by telephone, any form of communication. We want to greet you here at Williams Memorial. To call to worship, please stand. I would praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The opening hymn would be sung, Outward Christian Soldier.
foundation of faith. church. God is good. God is good all the time and all the time he is good. Hallelujah. Let us go to God in prayer. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. God, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. God, we magnify your holy name, God, for you are so worthy to be praised, God. God, we thank you, God, for loving us, God, loving us in spite of ourselves, God. Lord, thank you, God, for letting us all rise this morning, God, with an able body, God, and in our right mind, God. God, you give us activity of our limbs, God, eyes to see, God, that we can see to bring ourselves here to the house to worship or praise you on this morning, God. And God, we thank you, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for how you have blessed us throughout the week, God. Oh, God, some of us were at some pains, God, but God, you heal us, God. And God, we said thank you, God. Lord, some of us been, went through some things, God. Deaths in the families, God. But God, you see us through, God. And Lord, we said thank you, God. Lord, we praise you, and God, and give you all the glory and all the honor, God, for how good you've been, God. Not no goodness of our own, God, but your goodness, God, and your mercy, God. Oh, God, and your kindness toward us, God. Lord, we thank you, God, that we can gather together this morning, God, one more time, God. Gather in the name of Jesus, God, on today, God. God. Oh, God, and assemble ourselves together, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for all that are watching by live stream, God. Oh, God, watching by Facebook, God. Oh, God, watching by however way they're watching, God. Lord, and I thank you, God, for we can be in the sanctuary this morning, God, to come together, God, to worship and praise your holy name, God, and to hear what does say the Lord to us today, God. And Lord, we say thank you, God. We thank you, God, for our musician on this morning, God. Oh, God, we thank you, God, for our choir on this morning, God. God, we thank you for our ushers this morning, God. But God, we thank you for our pastor, God, and our first lady, God. Oh, God, we thank you, God, because we know, God, that you have already given him a word, God, on this morning for us, God. And Lord, we're going to receive it, God. God, because we're going to receive it in the name of Jesus. And God, we come to you now in the name of Jesus, asking for forgiveness, God, for our sins, God. Oh, God, forgive us, God, for those sins, God, those things that we done that we didn't even realize God that we were sin God those looks that we gave God oh God those ways that we act God oh God forgive us God for those ones that we promise you that we will love God when you ex when we you accept us as yours God but God we didn't do it God and Lord forgive us God and Lord we ask you in the name of Jesus God that you will let your Holy Ghost anoint and fall fresh upon all of us God let your anointing fall in this place God God. Oh God, let your anointing rain down on us today, God. Oh God, that we will hear your word, God. Oh God, that we will receive your word on today, God. Lord, we pray for our pastor, God. Lord, as he stand here at this sacred desk, God, and proclaim your word, God, that you have got given him, God. God, give us a listening ear, God. Give us a receiving heart, God. Lord, that we will receive, God, from you on this morning, God. Lord, I pray, God. Oh, God, I pray, God, because I know, God, that somebody sat here, God, that, Lord, that don't believe your word, God. But, God, we pray for them right now, God. Move on their heart, God. Speak to their heart, God. Lord, help them to yield their soul to you, God. Oh, God, I said, Lord, I yield, I yield. What must I do to 
be saved, God. Lord, I pray, God, this morning, God. Lord, I pray, God, for all God that are sick on this morning, God. Touch sick bodies, God. Touch sick bodies everywhere, God. Lord, I pray a blessing upon your people, God, on this morning, God, that in the sanctuary, God. I pray a blessing upon your people, God. Oh, God, that on the, in the airways, on the airways, listening, God, this morning, God, that's in the parking lot, God, this morning, listening, God. Oh, God, bless them, God. Bless them, oh, God. Bless them, God. Bless them through your word, God. Oh, God, and help us to live a life, God, that will be pleasing unto you, God. Oh, God, that we will be enter, God, when this whole life is over, God, that we can enter, God, that we can enter into your kingdom, God. Oh, God, bless the one that have bereavement in their families on today, God. Lift them up, God, on every side, God. Let them know, God, that you are their peace and that you are their joy, God. And, Lord, that we forever praise you and give you glory, Lord. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now don't play with me. How many of you have been good to you? The Lord been good to you. Come on and give him some praise. But he is worthy to be praised. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Anybody got a hallelujah praise? When you look back and see what the Lord has done for you, you have a hallelujah praise. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, not for man, woman, boy, or girl, but if it had not been for the Lord on my side, hallelujah. Ah, oh God. I don't want to start them, but when I think about the goodness of Jesus, and all that he's done for me. Not some of the things, but all that he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Give him some praise, give him glory. Hallelujah. Our scripture lesson will be coming this morning from 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, the 1st through the 7th verse. 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, and the 1st through the 7th verse reads, And the son of the prophet said to Elijah, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan and let every man Take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered, go. Then one said, please consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when 
they came to the Jordan, yeah. they cut down trees. Yeah. And as one was cutting down a tree, mm -hmm. the, oxen, the oxen axe head fell into the water. Yeah. And he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was bored. So the man of God said, Where did it fall? And he showed him the place. Yeah. So he cut off a stick and threw it in there. And he made the iron flick, therefore he, he said, pluck it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and took it. May the Lord add a blessing yes, to the reading yes, of his word. The glory, Patrick. Let us stand. What a great morning to be in the house of God. We welcome all of you who've come. We welcome all of our friends and family members, guests uh, who are shared with us on today. So we are thankful to you for being here on today. We want to ask this question. Is any person here celebrating a birthday today or this week? Any persons, amen. Oh, amen. Praise God, happy birthday, and any persons celebrating anniversary today or this week, amen. So we're glad to have all of you, and we welcome all of our guests to be a part of this. We want to first of all thank those persons who were with us on yesterday as we uh, went to our district conference in Charlotte. Thank you for sharing with us. Wonderful conference, and we uh, say congratulations to our presiding elder for having such a great uh, celebration or great meeting. I also want to thank those uh, young people who came out last Saturday, last Sunday evening, as they was grilling with the pastor. Amen. Uh, we had a wonderful time. Amen. And uh, I thank God for them. I paid for it this week because I tried to play football. Amen. <laughs> But anyway, thank God, thank God for God, amen. He'll keep you when nobody else will, amen. He's a keeper, amen, so I greet God for that. We are, I want to also thank God for all of you who are praying for us and praying for the church as we continue to prepare uh, for our uh, hosting our meeting uh, in July, we need your support and help. So we'll be, there'll be many things coming and asking you to do. So please help us to make sure that we do a great job in hosting. Men, we've, we've kicked off our men's day, amen. And uh, we're really excited about it and uh, amen. And I want to share with you that the, they've used the color blue, amen. And that stands for loyalty and stands for uh, prayer, deep praying, praying, and we want to make sure that as we, as we, as men, we take our rightful place, that we'll be the leaders that God wants us to be, yes, sir. and that we'll be loyal to the cause that God has called us to, and so I thank God for that and for the men they committee. We want to remind you again that at 945, we have our uh, Sunday school, and we encourage you to uh, join us at 945 virtual, we have virtual Sunday school. Then uh, 6.30 on tomorrow, uh, we will have our prayer, amen, Unite 3400, we invite you to join us. Uh, that, uh, and then on, join us again on Tuesday at 12 noon and Thursday at 12 noon. We want to remind you that on this coming Wednesday at uh, 6.30, we have our Bible study, amen. And this week, uh, we'll be studying or talking about the enemy within, the enemy within. So we ask that you would join us on this coming Wednesday. 
And so we're grateful and thankful to God for all that he's doing. And then uh, we are looking forward to God and worshiping God. Want to also remind you that we are uh, trying to do our history or we're looking at our history in terms of our lineage and each family is to work on that. And, and in, November, in uh, February of next year, uh, we will be displaying our heritage in the back so we know where we are, how we link. Uh, and uh, the Black History Committee is doing a great job. They have seminars uh, on Thursdays, uh, every other Thursday, or I think they have one this Thursday. And uh, the purpose is for us to learn how to do and what to do. And I think that that is important for us to, uh, there, there, there are things that we can learn to make, make our uh, journey and our exploration exploration, exploring, uh, and our journey much easier. So we encourage you to do that. We remind you that uh, we will be receiving our offering at the end of the service, and you can start preparing now. You can pay it by Givelify, e-giving. Uh, you may write a check or cash, put an envelope if you were present in the sanctuary, and uh, give it as we pass out, or you may bring it by the office. So we are thankful to you for those of you who trust God and, and worship God with your offering, we're so grateful to you because we know uh, many of you are making, are making a sacrifice and we thank you for making those sacrifices and we want you to continue uh, to share uh, and to worship God with your offering. And so uh, before we come back with the word of God, we're gonna ask uh, our choir to come and give us a song.
is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that he's worthy to be praised? Amen. Oh, my God, my God. Let us pray. Wonderful God, thank you again for this opportunity. God, just fill me with your spirit. Open the hearts and minds of your people, all that are listening on at this time creating them a, a heart that will receive what you have for them. Use me. Anoint me. Cover me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Our text for today was the text read earlier out of 2 Kings, uh, the sixth chapter, verse one through seven. And the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, see now the places where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let us make there a place where they may dwell. So he answered, go. And then one said, please consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron ax head fell into the water. And he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And so the man of God said, where did it fall? And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. And therefore, he said, pick it up for yourself. So he reached out to his hand and took it. I just want to talk to you for a few moments from this message, losing the cutting edge. Losing the cutting edge. The other day I was reading about football injuries. And I read an article written by Mohan entitled Common Football Injuries That Could End an NFL Career. And he wrote about how football is a dangerous sport yes, it is. and that it has a long history of concussions and other injuries that can end a player career. Yes, yes. They did a study on about these injuries and they came to the conclusions that the injuries and how it affects the players and the way uh, they play after the injury. It is said that when it comes to some serious industry, industry, industries, the one thing that seems most damaging is that of getting a ligament or tendon injured. Uh, these injuries uh, seem most difficult to recover from and then some of the other injuries, such as a broken bone or a sprain. And the study uh, looked at 559 NFL players who underwent procedures to re repair a variety of orthopedic injuries. And these players were tracked for two years on an average. And uh, we found out that 79% of the players came back to the field. But the return rate was highest among those who with a broken arm or leg or sports. But those who had ligaments, yes, sir. they did come back. But one of the things that they noticed after they came back, that they had lost the cutting edge. Mm. They could not play as 
as they used to play. They yes, could sir. not cut like they used to cut or, 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 or do the things that they used to do simply because they had lost the edge. One such player was Dante uh, uh, Culpepper, uh, who was a quarterback yes, sir. for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, he, he was a great player. And in 2004, he passed for over 4,000 yards, which is certainly a, a great feat in football. And, but in 2005, he had an injury, mm, horrific knee injury. Uh, he, he, and when he was playing the Carolina Panthers, and when he, when he did this, even though he went through rehab mm -hmm. and he tried to come back, mm. he had lost the cutting edge. He could not play like he used to. So he became a journeyman. Yep. Uh, they, they sent him from team to team as a backup quarterback. Yeah. Sometimes we have people in the church Watch out. who become injured. And then they lose their cutting edge. Come on, Pastor. I need a praying church. How many people do we know yes. that have stopped coming to church? That have stopped praising God like they used to? What? They stopped doing Bible study because they were hurt in the church. Mm. And they never get back to what they used to be. Right. But I've seen folk who were excited about the Lord, yes, who, who, who love God. But then something happened, and then they stopped coming. They stopped praising God. They, you know, one time they would be at every service. Now you don't see them at all. Oh, I need to pray in church up in here. They lost their cutting edge. Because when you love God, you don't let anything keep you from praising God. Do I have any witnesses in the house? When you really love God, you can't let folk who complain and criticize you stop you from worshiping God. Because I know one thing is I never want to lose my cutting edge. Oh, I need a praying church up here. In this text, uh, uh, we find that uh, uh, in this text is something about these uh, persons or prophets who were going to school. Yeah. And you have to understand at this time, these prophets were going to school simply because they, had, they were trying to grow spiritually. There was a conflict uh, in the area at that time between serving God and serving Baal. And what we discovered is that some folks served both of them. Pray with me. They, 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 you know, it's just like sometimes some of us mix stuff with God. Mm. Ouch. What do you mean, preacher? Well, uh, I mean that sometimes we mix superstition with God. Pray with me. Sometimes we're just as superstitious as we are religious. Sometimes we read the tea leaves as well as pray. Oh, I need a prayer church up here. Y'all might have quiet this morning, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you just take it in. My God, sometimes we go and read the tarot cards. Pray with me. But anyway, since I, since I can't get you on it, but you understand where I'm coming from. And so these prophets wanted to be pure in terms of serving only God, the God of their father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They wanted to be pure. And so as they were studying and as Elijah was teaching them, the, their group grew because many were coming because they wanted the, the pure uh, word of God. 
rather than a mixed word of God. Because we find that sometimes we mix the word of God with the world and we try to justify some of the things in the world that we do. And so one of the things happened is they decided then that we're going to build or add on to the building for which we study in. And so they had to go and they began to chop down wood. And as they began to chop the logs that were going to expand the building, one of the axe heads fell into the water. And the person who, who had the axe head to fall into the water began to cry, it didn't belong to me. I had borrowed it. Pray with me. So what, are you, what am I saying is there are things in the church that God and projects that God have for us that sometimes as we try to do those uh, projects and we try to do those ministries, we are excited until we come up against opposition. I need to pray in church up in here. There are times that you, I've seen choir members who, who, who love the Lord and who love to sing until they didn't sing their song. Then they decided, well, I don't want to sing anymore. The axe head fell in the water. I need to pray in church up in here. Uh, uh, I've seen folk who used to tithe, but stopped tithing because of something they didn't like. The axe head fell in the water. I need to pray in church up in here. And so you look at this and I'm saying, how do we lose our cutting edge? And so when I look at this text, there's something about what is a cutting edge. As a Christian, my cutting edge, one of the, the reasons I have a cutting edge, one of the reasons that I'm as strong is because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life. You see, when you are born again, God gives you the Holy Spirit. Everybody who's born again has the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Pray with me, church. And I don't know, do I have any spirit-filled people in the place? Mm. Do I have any folk that realize that the reason why I'm able to give God the praise is because of the presence of the Holy Spirit that's in my life. And the, it doesn't matter what I'm going through because what I'm going through does not affect the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit allows me to give him praise in spite of the pain in my body, in spite of the disappointment in my life, in spite of the lies that have been lied on me. I can give God the praise. Do I have any witness in the house that said it does not matter what I go through? I know that I got the Holy Spirit deep down inside of me and just excuse me why I give my praise just excuse me why I shout my shout because I know what I got Woo! I have something inside of me but then there's some of us who got it but then the axe head falls off. Hmm. So, ah, so the question is, when we lose hmm, our edge, well, a couple of things I want to share with you about losing your edge. We lose our cutting edge when the Holy Spirit takes a back seat. Look at the text. He was working. Then all of a sudden, the axe head fell off. There are a lot of us been working, but then the axe head falls off. 
Now, one thing I want to share with you, when you got the Holy Spirit, you can't lose it. Okay? You can't lose it. You can't lose it. Once you got it, you can't lose it. But it may not operate efficiently in your life. You see, there are a lot of folk, you know, they do wrong, but they got the spirit. They just don't listen to it. I need to pray in church up in here. You see, uh, even though we do not lose the Holy Spirit, there comes a time when the Holy Spirit is not prominent in our lives. Uh, the text says, but as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. You see, when the Holy Spirit is given free reign to operate in our lives, then we become sharp instruments of God. When you allow the Holy Spirit to operate in your life, amen, we are able to have the type of ministry that will blossom. Pray with me, church. Some, of you, some people don't understand when a person is being led by the Holy Spirit, and they are doing ministry. And those folk that come against them can't stop them from their ministry. It's because they are not fighting that individual, but they are fighting the Holy Spirit, which they cannot defeat. There's sometimes you look at folk and you wonder how in the world that they are able to carry out and do the work that they are able to do with all the distractions that are around them. You see, when you got your focus on the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is leading you, can't nobody stop you from doing the work that God has called you. I don't know about you, but I, I, I realize that I am a praiser. Amen. I may not praise God like you do. I may not jump up and run, the, but I am a praiser because there is a praise deep down in my spirit. And I try not to let worry. I try not to let bitterness. I try not to let anything keep me from praising God. Do I have anybody who can have a praise breakthrough? Well, how do we not allow the Holy Spirit to be prominent in our lives? Mm. Well, one way, amen, is when we quench the Spirit. Now, contrary to what folk say, you know, we have this idea that because the Spirit is high, and everybody not jumping, that somebody said, well, they quenching the spirit. Let me share something with you. Quenching the spirit is more than jumping. <laughs> you see, quenching the spirit is not believing the doctrine of God. Whew. When you fail, to believe the doctrine of God, then you're quenching the spirit. Because what the spirit does, it gives you clarity as to what that word means or that scripture means and how it should be applied in your life. When the Lord says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You have to understand that waiting can be difficult. Waiting, waiting can weigh you down. But the Spirit says, they that wait <laughs> upon the Lord shall, not maybe, but shall renew their strength. You see, you got to understand something here that a lot of folk are quenching the spirit uh, because of things you're going through. Sometimes you give up and sometimes you get upset and sometimes you become angry. But I guarantee you, if you learn how to wait on God, oh my God, I, I don't know about you, but there's something about waiting. 
when you learn to wait on God he will strengthen you when you learn to wait on God he will renew you when you learn to wait on God he will my God give you insight you got to understand there's something that's power in waiting on God because sometimes God is making the way straight sometimes God is in the front of you fighting your battles and that's why you gotta wait on God you gotta wait on God to make a way out of no way you gotta wait on God to turn the situation around you gotta learn to wait on God but when you quench the spirit the axe head falls off mm. There's a sermon I want to do, and I'm, I'm working on it. Talking about complaining people. I know y'all don't want to hear that, but I'm just praying for God to release me. But one of the things why the church is in danger is because of complaining people. Complaining people do not allow the Holy Spirit to operate as it should because we're complaining about everything in the church. If you want to see a church that's, that's, that's really diminishing, listen to the, complaint, the complaining people. Because you see, one thing about complaining, you don't encourage anybody to come to your church. And how can you convince folk to serve the Lord when you're talking about all the things that are going wrong in the church? I hope the Lord hurry up and help me and release me. We quench the spirit when we allow lies mm, to govern our lives and not allow the Holy Spirit to govern our lives. There's some of us believing the lie folk told us. You are the greatest singer in the church. Girl, boy, that Holy Spirit looked like it was just all on you. Can't nobody usher like you usher. I like the way you walk down the aisle with your hand in your back and when you make that turn and you walk back up. I need to pray in church up in here. Oh, uh, girl, you really preached today. You preached the horns off a of billy goat. That's when we began to quench the spirit. Not only do we mm, quench the spirit when we lose our cutting edge, but another way we quench the spirit is about grieving the Holy Spirit. Mm. Oh, my God. Let me read to you what Paul writes in Ephesians 4.29. He said, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not grieve God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Get rid of all bitterness rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of malicious behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Look at the text. 
To grieve means to make sad or sorrowful. It means to cause sorrow, pain, or distress. And God is sorrowful or grieved when we do things. He said, first of all, he said, don't be using foul or abusive language. In other words, church folks, stop cussing. Let me just make it plain. Our vocabulary should be a little bigger than that. <laughs> Pray with me. He says, don't use foul language. Not only that, uh, uh, look what else he says. He says, uh, bitterness. Sometimes we are bitter. Look, just because one man dump you, you ought not just be bitter against every man. Pray with me, Holy Ghost. But what I'm saying is, is this. Just because somebody in the church mistreats you, don't stop coming to church. Don't become bitter. You got people who are just bitter. I just don't like it. I just don't like the way they sing. I don't like the way they do this. That's bitterness. Then he says rage and anger. You know, you know there's some of us, you know, if somebody look at us and we don't think they look at us right, we become angry. And some of us, you know, you know, that's why there's so much killing in the world right now. You know, somebody say something, say something you don't like, the first thing you do, pull out your gun and shoot them. Mm, slander, my God. So, so we, we got to be careful. That's what grieves the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fits of rage. Rage speaks that a person who is easily angered and who raises his voice shouting and screaming. My God. God, my God, my God. Oh, my God. You know, some of us can't talk unless we, we, you know, we, we can't express ourselves unless we're fussing. Amen. But then, I don't want to leave you like that. So then how can we get our cutting edge back? Look at the text. The text says, first of all, he was upset because the axe head didn't belong to him. <laughs> what are you saying, preacher? The Holy Spirit don't belong to us. <laughs> God just gives it to us for us to use. But then he says that the man of God cut down a tree and threw it in the Jordan. My question becomes, what is all this symbolic of? Well, first of all, the axe head represents me losing something or something become covered. You see, when you are angry or when you are angry, you can cover over, cover up the things that God has intended for you to do. You can, you, you, there are things that I can do that I am not able to do simply because of my attitude. When you have the wrong attitude, there are some things you can't do for the Lord. And, and it's covered up. But what I, what I like about it, he says, he threw the tree branch. Now, if Elisha had the power, he probably could have spoke to the iron head and said, float. <laughs> and it could have come up. Pray with me. He could have thrown a rock in it and have it to come up. But he threw, amen, a branch. Somebody said, well, why would he throw a branch? Well, the branch represents the cross. <laughs> oh, my God. You don't, you don't understand. What are you saying, preacher? I was in the Jordan. I was up under the water. But the cross of Christ lifted me up, put my foot on a solid rock. He threw it. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. What does it mean when he threw the, 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 the branch into the water and the iron float? Anybody know that iron sinks? Pray with me, church. Iron sinks in water, but it floated. And what makes it float? It was a miracle. 
I don't know about you, but right now, I need a miracle in my life. And whenever I get God from glory, whenever I start lose my head, whenever my head fall off, I need a miracle in my life to turn situation around. When I become angry, I need a miracle to calm me down. When I start cussing, I need a miracle to clean out my mouth. When I say, oh my God, stop, oh my God. When I start judging folk, I need a miracle in my life. I don't know about you, but in order for me to get my ex head back, I need a miracle right now. I need God to do a wonderful thing in right now. I need God to change my attitude. I need God to change my demeanor. I need God to change how I see things. I don't know about you, but I need a miracle. You can't stop hating folk unless a miracle happen in your life. Because you can't do it on your own. You can't stop complaining unless you have a miracle in your life. Mm. Hallelujah. I thank God for miracles. What you mean, Reverend? I can remember when I used to be sassy with my mama. <laughs> All right? Hey, Amen. You know, mama, you tell me something. I had a little lip. Now, when I was growing up, <laughs> they hit you with whatever, whatever they got their hand on. <laughs> 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 it didn't matter if it was laying there. Woo! <laughs> Whatever they got their hand on, <laughs> that's what they hit you with. You kids are lucky. <laughs> Woo! I never forget a friend I had. <laughs> it was, we were outdoors playing his granddad. It came down. Granddad was bent over, coming down. He said, boy, take this bread in the house. And he started, I ain't doing nothing. His granddad had an ax. <laughs> he threw it at him, just missed him. <laughs> I bet you the next time he said, take that bread in the house, <laughs> he took it. <laughs> Woo! Y'all don't, y'all, 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 young people, y'all blessed because whatever they had their hand on. Yeah, I have nightmares now about that axe. <laughs> Whew. Uh, but what I'm saying is, whatever's going on in your life, if you need to forgive somebody, you need a miracle in your life. If you're hurting right now because of what folks said to you or have done to you, you need a miracle in your life. Oh, my God. When you lose your cutting edge, you need a miracle to get it back. Amen. Let us stand. Amen. We thank all of you who are watching, amen. Mamie Jacobs, thank you. Brenda Williams says, amen. Hey, Damien Standback, my God, amen. Brenda Williams, all of these persons are online. We thank you for being online with us today. Amen. Rochelle Janine, amen. <laughs> Help us, Williams, amen. Help us, help us, help us. I'm trying to help you, amen. She, Michelle Janine says, I need, need a miracle in my life. Amen. If you need a miracle in your life and you watch it, just, just, just text it. Amen. Amen. Tanisha Robertson says, I need a miracle in my life. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Floral Standback says, Amen, Pastor. I need, it. I need a miracle in my life. 
Oh, we're opening the doors of the church. Maybe there's somebody here who needs a miracle in their life. You've been going through something. You, you know, you, 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 you're not as sharp as you used to be when it came to serving God. And you need a miracle in your life. Several years ago, May was our miracle May. Things happen. Things change. So if you need a miracle in your life, you're a young person. And uh, you just don't understand why your parents are trying to do what they're trying to do in your life. And what you need is a miracle to have patience, to trust God, to believe that he gave you the right parents. Yeah. Amen. Because sometimes we have this tendency, we see what other parents, or other kids say that children are doing. Amen. Praise God. Maybe there's somebody else. We need a miracle in your life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Maybe there's somebody else. Amen, amen. Maybe there's somebody else. Amen. I, I like this. They parents and the children are coming. Need a miracle in their life. Need a miracle in your life. Amen. Is somebody else hey, coming? Amen. Maybe there's somebody who, my God. Thank you. There's somebody that's going through some things in their lives. There's a hurt that you have that you have difficult getting through. You need a miracle in your life. And the hurt, it, 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 you know, it could be you're going through uh, whatever you're going through. The hurt, is there anyone here who has a pain, but they need a miracle in their lives? Would you come? Would you come right now? God is able to do that for you. Amen, 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 amen. Someone need to join the church, we invite you to come. Maybe you're depressed. Depression does come, and for whatever reason it is, but you need a miracle in your life right now. Would you come? You have an unforgiving spirit, and you need a miracle in your life. Would you come? You have been betrayed. And man, you, you know, you just kind of figure out why they do it for, did it to you. But you need a miracle in your life right now. Would you come? Maybe you're online. Maybe you're online and you need a miracle in your life. And you say, Rev, just pray for me. Amen. 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 Uh, Shonda Cobb says, I need a miracle in my life. Amen. Maybe there's some others. Amen. Uh, Natalie Robertson says, I need a miracle. Amen. Tony Turner Martin says, I need a miracle in my life. Amen. We will thank God. These are persons online that we shall share. Let us, those of the seats may be seated. But let us pray. God, the struggle is real. The hurt is so deep. And the hurt is painful. And God, we are struggling. And so right now, God, we need a miracle in our lives. We need you, God, to do something to help us, to, oh God, to get past where we are. God, that unforgiving spirit, help us, oh God. We need a miracle in our lives to help us to, to have that unforgiving spirit. Because God, we've tried, but we can't do it. We, we, we're attempting, but we can't do it. But we need a miracle right now. Oh my God. Somebody has abandoned us. Someone has mistreated us. And God, we're having a difficult time dealing with that. We need a miracle in our lives right now, God. Guide us through this. God, we keep talking, we keep, but we need a miracle right now. And so God, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood on all of these situations. And God, I trust that you will bring a miracle in their lives that they will be able to get beyond the things that are causing pain and hurt and distrust. God, do it right now in the name of Jesus. Anoint them right now in the name of Jesus. 
And God helped that cutting edge to float again, that they will be able to praise you, that they will be able to lift up your name, that they will be able to read your scripture, that they will be able to hear your word. Do it right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God is doing some great things right now. God is doing a great thing right now. And just say, I'm going to get my cutting edge back. Just say that, I'm going to get my cutting edge back. Amen. 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 I see people putting in the chat. Ravonda Garrett says, plead the blood of Jesus over this situation. Amen. I thank you. Amen. Amen. So we're grateful to God for all of you, what you're doing. We are preparing now to receive our offering as our stewards prepare. Those of you who use your electronic devices, we invite you to do that right now. Uh, you may go to Givelify. You may go to your e-giving. You can go ahead and give your offering. Not only that, but those of you who are in the house and want to put it in an envelope, you can do that right now. Do it right now. Worship God with your offering. Worship God with your offering. Oh, my God. God has been too good to me for me to deny him that part of my worship. So would you do that? Men, we've asked you to give 200 for Men's Day. Would you do that? If you wish to do that, you can pay a portion of it. You can pay it all. Just give something today for Men's Day. Amen. Brother Ken, the offertory. <laughs> benediction. Almighty Father, help us to remember that freedom does not automatically perpetuate itself, that we have to work at it, nurture it, protect it, and pray for it. Freedom, like faith, needs our attention and our cooperation. Lord, be with us now to strengthen us about us to keep us above us, to protect us, beneath us, to uphold us, before us, to direct us, behind us, to keep us from straying, and round about us to defend us. Blessed are you, O Father, forever and ever. It's that time again. Yes, it's time for our annual Men's Day celebration. It's Men's Day 2022. This year's Men's Day theme is Help Wanted. That means let's get involved and lend a hand. We're asking all men 17 and under to pay $10, all men 18 and over to pay $200. Our Men's Day celebration theme color is blue. So come on, guys. Let's make this the best Men's Day ever. Men's Day will run now through July 17th, and remember our theme, Help Wanted. Our Men's Day scripture is Matthews 9, verses 37 and 38. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Gentlemen, let's celebrate the harvest. Men's Day 2022 is upon us, and help is wanted. Now take that, Satan. Calling all golfers. Gentlemen, let's tee it up. Our men's day golf outing will be held Saturday, May 28th at Seven Lakes Golf Club in West End, North Carolina. 
buses will leave the church at 7.30 promptly for 18 holes of golfing fun. So all you pros and pretenders, get ready. A full menu lunch will be provided, and all of this for only $20. A sign-up sheet is in the vestibule. So golfers, get ready. We'll see you there. Good morning, Williams Memorial. These are today's announcements for Sunday, May 22nd, 2022. For the month of May, in-person sanctuary and parking lot worship will be held at 8 o'clock a.m. only. Virtual services will continue to be broadcast at both 8 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. services. No registration is required. The Embracing Your Family Legacy Project continues with the Black History Committee presenting an information session on Thursday, May 26th at 6.30 p.m. A guest presenter will share information and tips and answer questions. Zoom information will be provided prior to each session. The Feeding 10,000 campaign is off to a good start. Our theme is Purpose Driven 10,000, a 12-year drive of showing love, dedication, and sacrifice. We are blessed to be a blessing. We will collect green beans for the month of May and corn during the month of June. Graduates of high school, college, and above will be recognized on Sunday, June 12th. To be recognized, all graduates must Submit information using the link tinyurl.com slash wm dash grad 2022 by Friday, May 27th. All photos must be emailed to yonkeisha at hotmail.com. The Carolina Region Annual Conference will be held on Sunday, July 24th through Wednesday, July 27th, 2022. Williams Memorial will host the annual conference and it will be held at the Corey Convention Center in Greensboro and here at Williams Memorial CME. Volunteers will be needed, so mark your calendars. Thank you for your commitment to serve. Virtual Sunday School will meet at 9.45 a.m. for all classes, preschool and primary, junior, youth, adult, and ministers. The Zoom links are sent through email and text. Please contact the church if you are not receiving this information. Join us each Monday evening at 6.30 p.m. in corporate prayer with Unite 3400. Moments of nurturing prayer times are on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 noon. Dial 339-209-6345 to join these corporate prayers. The La Biz Cell Group continues to feed the community a hot meal every Thursday. Volunteers and donations are needed to help pack bags on Sunday mornings. Please call the church office to sign up. We are still encouraging all members to get vaccinated. Let's do our part in trying to keep our members safe as we come to worship here. The vaccine has proven to greatly lower the risk of hospitalization and death caused by COVID-19. During the current phase, we are abiding by the following guidelines. One hour socially distanced with mask worn sanctuary worship service to be held each Sunday at 8 o'clock a.m. during the month of May. You may still listen to service from the parking lot. One-hour church services will be broadcast on Sunday at 8 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. via internet and phone. Pay your offering by mail, by Givelify, e-giving, or text to give. Bible study is held each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. via our online platforms. Watch recorded services on the TCT station each Sunday at 5 o'clock p.m. and on Spectrum Cable TV Channel 8 each Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. and Friday evenings at 7 o'clock p.m. Let us remember our bereaved families and our sick and shut-in with our prayers and calls. We would like to leave you with just a thought. Take hold of the Word of God and blossom because God will round up weeds. <laughs> 